First, let's talk about how you're going to enter your actual payroll transactions. Entering your actual payroll transactions is completely different from this workaround that I'm going to show you. And that process really varies, so I'm not going to go into that here. What we're going to be doing is a workaround that is completely unrelated to entering your actual payroll transactions. What we're going to do will not affect the accounting or the general ledger in any particular way. We're going to be entering completely offsetting transactions. The very first step if you're entering payroll from an outside payroll service is to get the hourly burdened rate on all of your employees. We know what our hourly gross wage is to our employee. We pay them $20 an hour or $30 an hour. But to get their hourly burden rate, we need to take into consideration the other costs to the company, like the payroll taxes, the workers' comp, and the employee benefits. I've created a worksheet to help you. It's on this page, and it's called the Labor Burden Worksheet. First, you're going to enter your assumptions. These are your payroll taxes. We've got FICA, which is Medicare and Social Security. This is the current actual rate, and it stays the same for most companies. <clears throat> Next, you'll have your federal unemployment, so you'll enter that amount here. And then you'll have your state payroll taxes. I realize that some of your state payroll taxes max out after a certain amount of employee wages. So you might wanna do two calculations. But I also wanna let you know that it's not important that this burden rate be 100% accurate. We want it to be as close as possible so that when we look at our job cost reports, we know that we're looking at something true, but we don't want it to be but it doesn't have to be 100% accurate because it's not what is going to actually affect our general ledger. Once you've entered your payroll tax information in the assumption section, enter the employee's name, how many vacation days you provide, if any, the monthly health insurance cost that the company pays, if any, retirement benefits as a percentage, if the employee provides any, as well as the workers' comp rate. For the workers' comp rate, I realize that can also vary. But for this example, you probably want to use the highest rate, which for most companies is carpentry. Then enter the gross wage. Once this information is entered, the spreadsheet will calculate the total labor burden. So this is the total hourly rate, including all of the payroll taxes and employee benefits and workers' compensation. Once we have that information, we can go to QuickBooks and use that to create our job costs. Let's do that now. In this method for job costing the payroll from an outside payroll service, we're gonna leverage the manual payroll system in QuickBooks. The first thing you wanna do is turn on the manual payroll system. Click on the Help menu, and then click QuickBooks Desktop Help. In the search bar, type in turn on manual payroll and then search. Then click on process payroll manually without a subscription to desktop payroll. From here, simply click on the manual payroll calculation setting. It's going to give you a little warning. And then you're going to click on set my company file to use manual calculations. Now you'll get a message saying you must now calculate and enter your paycheck amounts manually. Next, we're going to set up a couple of accounts on our chart of accounts. So go to the lists menu, click chart of accounts, and let's make sure that we have a bank account called the adjustment register. It's a dummy bank account. And let's also make sure that we have a cost of goods sold account called job labor costs. We do. If you don't have one, just set that up as a cost of goods sold account. And then in the expenses, make sure that we have something called payroll expenses. Now here's where the process may different a little, differ a little bit for each person. If you have office or overhead payroll of some kind, you wanna set up a new account called something like office payroll. So it's gonna be an expense account and we're gonna call this office payroll. If you don't, you can just skip this part. And then we're gonna make that a sub account of payroll expenses. And then we're gonna set up one other account and it's an expense account. And we're gonna call it job labor offset. This will allow you to enter all of your regular payroll expenses uh, or your payroll costs that are coming in from the payroll service. Post all of those to the payroll expenses account. And you can even post them to the office ex payroll office expenses account. We're gonna make this a sub account of payroll expenses as well. Then click save and close. 
Next, we're gonna set up our payroll items. So click on the list and click on the payroll item list. We wanna set up a payroll item called, called job related labor. And when we go to click up, set up a new payroll item, we're gonna click custom setup and we're gonna choose wage. Then we're going to choose hourly wages, regular pay, and we're gonna set up a payroll item called job related labor. And we're gonna map this to our cost of goods sold account, job labor costs. Then we're gonna set up another item. So click payroll item, new, custom setup, next. We're gonna set up a deduction. And we're gonna call this deduction job labor offset. We are not going to click track expenses by job. Then click next. We're gonna to totally skip over all of this stuff about liabilities. And in the liability account, we're actually going to choose our job labor offset expense account, the new one that we created. That's a sub account of payroll expenses. And click next. Tax tracking type is none. Next. We're not gonna click anything here. We're not getting mixed up in taxes at all. Then we're gonna click calculate this item based on hours. Um, and we're gonna choose gross pay, next. We're not going to put any amounts in here. And then we're going to click finish. Next, we're going to set up our employees. From the gray menu bar, click employees and then employee center. Let's set up our first new employee. In the employee record, we're going to put very little information in here. We're gonna type in his name. We don't need to put in any other information in this screen. Then we're gonna click down to payroll info. Here we're going to click a payroll schedule and then we're gonna click add new. Here we're gonna add the payroll schedule in which we would like to record the employee wages to the job. This may or may not go along with your regular actual payroll schedule, but whatever frequency we want to process our timesheets and post the time to the job. We could do this daily, we could do this weekly, I think weekly is a good time period, so let's go with that. And you only have to do this payroll schedule setup on the first employee. Um, so we'll type in weekly and then we'll select weekly for our payroll schedule. And then we're gonna put the payroll end date as of the, the last day that is the day before the first day we want to start recording our job costed payroll. So for this example, I'm just going to choose February 3rd. That means that on February 4th, I'm going to start tracking my uh, outside payroll service costed to the job. The date that should appear on paychecks for this period, um, we'll just put February 10th and click OK. Next, we're gonna enter the earnings item, job related labor. And here we're gonna put his hourly burden rate. So let's say for this employee, it was $43.28. That's the hourly burden rate that we calculated on our burden rate worksheet. You can also use an overtime. You can set up an overtime rate here too, if you need to, and what the burden rate is for that. We're just gonna keep it simple here. We're gonna also click use time data to create paychecks. And then we're going to put in our deduction item, our job labor offset. And we're gonna enter the rate for that at exactly the same as the employee's hourly rate. Then we're gonna click on the taxes button and just make sure that we have not selected any taxes. Just uncheck all of this stuff. State none, other, nothing in there. Then click okay. When it's gonna keep trying to warn you because it doesn't like it that we're unchecking uh, all the tax boxes, but we don't wanna have any of that information in here. Now, if you want to, you can put some of the employee's personal address and employment info in here just for tracking purposes, but this is all we need for doing the job costing. From here, we're gonna click okay. When it gives us any kind of warnings, we're just gonna say, leave it as is. So you would set all of your employees up just like that. For this example, we're next gonna move on to entering the employee timesheet. So we'll go to the employees menu from the gray menu bar and click enter time, use weekly timesheet. Now we'll enter the time or of course, download it from T-Sheets. Uh, for this example, we'll just put in some time. Uh, you always wanna make sure that you use the appropriate service item. 
So we're gonna do plumbing labor. And for the payroll item, I'm just gonna use job related labor. When you're done entering the time, of course, click save and close. You'll enter all of the time for each employee this way. For this example, we're just gonna have the one employee. Next, when you're ready to run your job costed payroll, click employees, pay employees. Now remember that our time was February 10th. So let's click on John Smith and open the paycheck detail. Notice that all of our time has populated. Actually, we ended up entering time for the period of 129 through 24. Important to keep track. Doesn't really matter. The time from this week's pay has now populated into the check with the employee's burden rate and the number of hours, the job and the service item. So this is now going to show up on this job cost report. But of course, we don't really want to create a paycheck. We've already entered our actual payroll somewhere else. And that's where the job labor offset item comes in. It will automatically, because we put the rate of this in the employee record that matches his hourly rate, and we asked the item to calculate this based on the number of hours. So this should automatically completely offset all of the payroll. But this item is not going to offset this payroll to the job. Remember that when we created the deduction item, we, we did not click the to track the job costs to this item. So th these items are going to show up on the job cost, but this is going to completely negate and cancel out the entire paycheck. Your check amount should always be zero. Let's click save and close, continue, and then create paychecks. Now remember, this transaction is in addition to you entering the actual payroll transaction. So when the payroll comes in through the payroll company, we're gonna be posting that to the payroll expenses account. And you can post it all to the office payroll if you have office payroll in addition to your job related payroll. Um, or you can just post it right to payroll expenses if you have all job related payroll. The idea of this is that we know we may not be exactly 100% on down to the penny with our job labor costs. And so if we have office payroll and we post all of our payroll to office payroll, then we'll use this job labor offset account to the deduction item. And what's going to happen is when we look at our profit and loss, for the date range that includes our paycheck date, we're going to see that we now have job labor costs as a positive under cost of goods sold, that is our job labor at the burden rate, and then we'll see this job labor offset for the same exact amount down in the expenses. So if I've posted all of my payroll expenses, my actual payroll expenses here, say they were $4,000 because I had office payroll in there as well, the job labor offset will just take that out of expenses and put it into the cost of goods sold. It's a very simple way of handling it. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you never end up with any payroll liabilities or payroll taxes being calculated. And if you set it up just like this, you won't. Now let's take a look at our job cost report so we can see the job costed payroll there. I'm just gonna run a job profitability detail report. First, we'll do the kitchen remodel job. And here is the payroll transaction that we created for those hours at that burden rate. That's the paycheck that we created. And if we run a job cost report on the other job, we're going to see those hours at the burdened rate value job costed to that service item that was on the timesheet. If you have a lot of employees, this method is a little bit better than the vendor method just because you can run all the payroll at once. You don't have to create those individual offsetting transactions that I demonstrate in video number eight.